Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, we are creating this book cover with beautiful texture using a hot glue gun. This video is also part one to the Coptic Stitch Binding tutorial, which I promised to do and so many of you want to see. So today I'm doing two things, demonstrating this texture technique, that's the main theme of the video, while also making the cover for the Coptic Stitch Binding video, and we will also prepare the signatures. So next week, when the binding tutorial is up, you will have your cover, your signatures, and you're ready to go. That's the plan. But for now, let's stick with the hot glue fun because you can apply this technique to literally anything. And if you're not interested in the Coptic Stitch Binding, you simply don't have to watch the second part of this video. All right, so without further ado, let's jump right in. The first thing that you need is your base. In this case, I'm using these two cut down pieces of quite thick and sturdy cardboard because I will be using this for an actual book or a journal. So you need it to be sturdy and you also need your hot glue gun. Uh, the surface or your base can be anything you want it to be. If you want to make a canvas, if you want to work directly on a canvas, then you, your base is your canvas. Okay, so now you just start making some doodles you can do circles you can do dots you can do lines and you just start creating creating your pattern whatever you want it to be it can be just random shapes just have a little play around now i'm thinking because this is going to be my cover for the coptic stitch binding I want to leave a little bit of space where my stitches are going to go so because I don't want to stitch through the hot glue that's already dried. So I'm just keeping that in mind. Just for reference, when you do, this is Coptic stitch binding and the stitches are, are visible on the cover. So I don't want to have to stitch through very thick dried hot glue. That's, this is what I'm talking about. Just leave a little bit of space. Depending on what you're making, of course, if you're making artwork, then this doesn't apply. You can try and do a little swirls. You know, some heat guns have, you can have a lot more control with it. And others like this one here, I don't really have much control. So I'm just randomly doing some shapes. And now I'm gonna start maybe doing some dots. Maybe I'll do a dot in each of the corners, just a little bead of glue. You can see here, this is what I'm creating. The little beads, the little dots. Oh, I'm missing one here. But that's what we're going for. And here we go. So you decide when you want to stop. Maybe this is quite a lot. Maybe there's a whole lot more than I can that I can do here. Maybe I'll just go a little bit more towards the edge. All right, I'm going to call this one done just for now. I'm going to pop it to the side. And now, because I'm making a book, I want to make sure front cover, back cover, which means the binding will be on this side, which means I'm not going to come all the way to the edge on this side. All right, I'm gonna call this one done. I'm really liking the dots, so maybe I overdid it, but I just wanted to show you this one here. You know, it's totally up to you. Like you can just not have the dots at all. You can just have the little swirls or you can have quite a lot of dots. That That's the fun part about this project. You can really make different things. All right, so the next thing you're gonna do now that this is all dry, this is the first one I did. So if you'll notice all of these I don't know how well you can see in the video, but all of these little strings from the hot glue, try and remove them as much as you can. You can blast them with a heat gun or your hairdryer, and usually they will melt, but I'm not gonna do that now. And the reason why we wanna get them off is because they are not glued directly onto the cardstock. So when we do the next step, which is applying, applying the tissue paper, these things are gonna cause air pockets. So we want to get get them off as much as we can. 
here's an easy way of getting rid of all of that stuff you just use something that's slightly coarse a little bit of a coarse brush and then you just go over it all right so this is my base ready the hot glue gun can be put away i don't need it anymore next thing you want to do is grab something to protect your surface preferably something that's non-stick okay next thing you need is a little bit of tissue paper preferably use a tissue paper that doesn't have a shiny side this one is quite thin not really that it matters maybe i can do, uh, use two layers another thing that you can use if you don't have tissue paper is paper roll um, these towels i wonder if i should use this today i would really like to have a little bit more on the edges so i'm not going to use this today i'm just going to stick with tissue paper rip a piece off enough to cover my my cover here and then scrunch it up i might even use a number of layers we'll see because this is very 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 thin tissue paper next thing you need is the glue and i'm using white pva glue this is just really cheap white glue or school glue they all have different names or different brands but most of these white glues you know will be a pva glue so another thing i like to do is mix it with water because i like the consistency to be runny so usually if you can see that it's runny it's this is just mixed with some water the ratio i use approximately is two thirds glue one third water all right it's just approximate so now i'm going to cover the whole thing first in glue and you will see here when i'm applying the glue the little bits some of these little bits you can see that i don't know if you can see that but some of the little string pieces are moving so it's okay if there's a couple left but you don't want to you don't want your whole piece to have all of the strings because that's going to impede with the gluing down process next thing i'm going to do is grab my scrunched up tissue paper and you want to create all of these wrinkles you don't want to kind of flatten it out all right so now that i've done that it's kind of staying on there for a bit i'm going to go in and saturate the whole thing with glue just cover the whole thing with glue don't try to make a perfect areas and you don't have to try and make sure that everything is glued down perfectly just yet we're just soaking everything with glue mm, i didn't leave enough of a border down here so i'll have to kind of now it's all ripping you see that it's ripping it's fine because what i'm going to do is just add another piece on top just in case if you're having issues, if your tissue paper is really thin and keeps ripping and yeah, this is what you do. You just grab another piece and you plop it right on top of the previous one. At this stage, everything is saturated in glue. I'm going to make sure that everything is glued down and I also might kind of seal the edge. This is a really thin tissue paper. But I think that like, uh, adding layers is going to give it more texture. And texture is what this is all about. Alright, I think this one is done. So now what I'll do is grab something, whatever, just a little stand. I'm going to peel this off. And then I'm going to put this on whatever I have. On a little pedestal like that so that it can dry kind of standing up in the air rather than i think you know what i mean so here you go see how that's kind of standing up all right i'm gonna let this dry and i'm gonna let it dry completely and in the meantime i'm going to do the second piece that i have here but for the second piece i'm not going to make myself suffer and i'm going to use this thicker tissue paper quite a bit of a difference you can see in the thickness So we want creases and at this stage another thing that you can do if your piece is quite thick whatever you're using tissue paper or whatever you can use a little bit of uh, water just spray it a little bit to help you kind of get this to stick down and now you know the drill So this was most definitely much easier, the thicker tissue paper. And I absolutely love the amount of texture that it gave me. I'm just going to 
make sure that the sides are kind of sitting down. That's that one. I just want to show you the difference in the texture. I don't know if you can see what I'm seeing, but you can see how this one has a lot more folds and a lot more wrinkles and a lot more texture than this one here. And of course, I prefer this. This will also work, but now I'm thinking, I just really want to go and put another piece of tissue paper on this one because I want more wrinkles and texture. So that's what I'm going to do. All this glue, when it dries, it becomes plastic, really. It becomes hard. So all the glue is also going to strengthen this tissue paper when it's dry. Okay, this is all nearly completely dry. This one's still wet and you can see warping. So I wanted to just mention this one dried flat for some reason. I'm not sure why. Your piece will warp. The thinner your base, the more warping you will notice. So don't worry about any of that at this point. We can always straighten it out later. Okay, so now that it's dry, the next thing you want to do is just cut off the excess but leave a little bit of a margin. And now you will simply apply glue in the same way as we did before and wrap the edges. I might start down here. I'm going to press this down. But I'll just do all of the corners first. And now the edges. Try and get those edges nice and straight. And I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to pop it up onto something again and repeat on your second piece. So this second piece of mine has a lot more tissue paper layers, as you can see here, but that's okay. I'm just gonna soak it up with glue. It will soak through all of the uh, layers. I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll be right back. Okay, everything is nice and dried and there's only very, very slight warping. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. If your cardstock is thinner, like I said before, there's going to be a lot more warping. And then you can just at this stage, try and um, bring it, you know, make it obey. So let me show you this one. I've already done on this one. You can see a little bit of warping. So you just maneuver it into place. See, that makes a big difference. Even if you lay it under something heavy, once everything is dry, that's going to do the trick too. Okay, at this stage, we want to paint. So, I want to achieve a dark brown color with gold accents. And this one, even though it looks brown, it's actually quite opaque when I pop it on here. So, what I do always, pretty much, I just go in with black. I paint everything black and then I start adding color. If you have gesso, you might want to do the gesso first before the paint. I have gesso and I'm just choosing not to, I'm choosing to skip that step altogether, the whole gesso step. So I'm going to start with the black. I personally love the combination of black and gold, but you can do any color combination at this stage. Look how cool even this looks. You can just simply do something like this and not cover the whole thing. I'll bring it a bit closer. See that? How cool is that already looking like this section here? You can play around with cover colors uh, that you prefer. You can do, say, purple and yellow. For example, you can do yellow base and then purple accents or whatever tickles your fancy. You can even spray paint if you prefer to do that. Might be a little bit quicker. I love using acrylic paint because when it dries, it's it's pretty much plastic, right? Well, now I'm just going to have to show you, won't I? Have you seen my acrylic skins video? Oh, look at this coolness. Look at that. How cool is that? I'll link that video, obviously, for you to have a look. Look at this. These are the two that I did in that video, acrylic skins. And I'm showing you this because this is just acrylic paint. That's all it is, acrylic paint. And you see that when the acrylic paint dries, it's like plastic. So the way that I see it, when I'm painting my pieces, whatever they may be, the acrylic paint is just like another layer of protection. So even if you have some raised bits of tissue paper or some air pockets, I feel like the acrylic paint 
once it's dried, it gives extra kind of hardness or reinforcement to that weak area. So once it's all painted, I like to turn it around and look at it from all angles. Because see, when, you, when I lift it, you can't see that well in the video, but I can see all these bits that were not covered by paint. For some reason, like I'm really particular that I want all the bits covered by paint. But I think like having white spots uh, showing through is actually, you know, part of the charm as well. But I don't know why. I just like to cover it all. And you know, this is where your own creativity comes in. I, I often get comments, not often, but sometimes where people say, why don't you just do it this way? Or why don't you just do it, turn it the other way? Isn't it easier to just paint it this way? And I often think, you know, that's excellent. You, you do whatever you, you tickles your fancy. You just, you, if you want white, white spots all over the piece, then you leave those white spots. You want to cover them all then you cover them all you might want to now leave this to dry or if you can paint the the edges in, on the inside as well i'm going to do that might as well and then i'll just dry it elevated so that the edges or the wet paint is not touching anything all right so i've painted on the inside too just those edges the middle will be covered and this is all done and that's looking really cool so i'm going to pop that aside to dry and of course repeat the process on this piece okay and the second one is done look at this glory okay now that this is dry i'm ready to apply my second color which is brown and i'm going to apply that color with my sponge you can use a brush you can use i don't know a fruit net and smoosh it on it's totally up to you what technique you want to use. I like to use a sponge because that way I can still have, like I'm not covering the whole thing in brown, I can still have a little bit of black peeking through. Okay, I have a bit of color on my sponge and off I go. And just keep building up the color. This would look really cool if you have two very different colors that are not so similar like black and brown it would be cool if you were using purple and orange for example or purple and yellow so because of the drying times in between this is the kind of project that you don't do all at once so just to give you a more of a full picture the tissue and the hot glue that i did just before was actually done yesterday so this is the kind of thing you can work on a little bit at a time, put it aside, do something else, come back to it when it's fully dry. All right, that's looking good. I'll show you what it looks like when it's fully black. It's kind of hard to see because of all of the light reflection, but here we go. You can see how that made a bit of a difference. Which one do you prefer? They both look good. I like this one, which is why I'm doing it. All right, so I'm gonna leave this one to dry and work on this one. And here we go. That one's also done. I'll wait for it to dry. Okay, now that that is all dry, I'm going to go in with some gold paint. And first, I'm going to apply gold paint kind of all over. I might smoosh it in with this brush. You can use also the sponge technique, whatever suits you. I've done a few different things here. I've used my finger, you know. So today, I think I might start with the brush. And I really want minimal, minimal color on the brush because it's easy to add more, but difficult to take away. So I'm just going to start nice and slow. You see what's happening there. I'm going to see what happens now when I use my sponge and the different kind of effect that it gives. Let's see. I feel like it deposits a little bit more color. I can get into the grooves a little bit better. Whatever you do, you simply cannot go wrong. You, you just can't go wrong with this technique. Mm, beautiful. And now at this point, I can use my finger to go over the, the raised, the hot glue, basically the raised bits. See how that's bringing them up. It's make the, making them more obvious. So you most definitely can achieve that result with just your gold paint. I have this specialty product, which I'm going to use. 
antique gold rub and buff. I just found it randomly in a craft supply store. Just a little bit on my finger and then again I'm going to go over the raised bits. And especially the little circles, the little dots that I made with the hot glue. And you can also pick up all of the wrinkles from, see that, from the tissue, the scrunched up tissue. And I think I'm quite happy with how this looks. It's a little bit unbalanced because there's all this empty space here, but that's going to be for the binding. And I just want to show you how they look and the difference that the gold makes. So big difference, right? Look at that, how glorious. It actually looks much better in real life than it does on video, which is unfortunate, but it's quite beautiful either way. So I might go in and apply a little bit of gold here around the edges as well. Just use my gold paint for that one. All right, I'm gonna call this one done and now I will repeat everything on this one. And here are my two pieces. As you're working, keep checking that you're not applying more color onto one piece than on the other. And if you by any chance get too much of this last color on, like if you get a blob, for example, here you can see way too much gold. I don't mind it, I'm gonna leave it. But if let's say you have a bit too much on your finger and then you end up having a, this blob that's easily fixed, you just grab your brush, you'll plop it into your darker paint. This is all dried now, but you just get a bit of darker paint on there and then you hide it, you hide the, the blob. <laughs> Very easily fixed. In fact, I'm gonna demonstrate because I feel like I have a bit too much gold here, so let's see what happens. Okay, make sure you clean your brush first because now I've got this color here and I've applied it there. Made it worse, that's fine, we can fix it. Or can we? Let's see, I've got a different brush, so I want minimal color on there and I can easily build up. I'm gonna let that dry. Well, I should let that dry for a little bit, but I'm just gonna keep going until I'm happy, get a bit of black. Okay, that's looking a bit better. And now go back in with the gold. I might use my sponge, just a bit of gold on my sponge. And just blend it all in nicely. And now finally, we're pretty much repeating all the steps. I really should let this dry first, but anyway, you can't go wrong. You can't ruin it. You simply can't. There's always ways to fix it. All right, let's see. And there we go. All right, so that's the texture part of the video done. And now I'm going to prepare this into a book cover. So first thing I want to do is decide which one do I like better, like which one do I want to be the front cover. They're gonna sit like this, that's gonna be front, back, and I'm just deciding which one do I like. I think this one is going to be my back cover, and this one is going to be my front cover. So before I cover the inside, I'm thinking of adding a little book plate. And I'm just gonna add a little bit more gold onto this. I don't have a gold book plate. I think it would look really nice. So since I don't have one, I'm gonna see if I can make one. Let's see. I'm happy with that. Next, I want to pop something obviously in there, like to make it, you know, so you can write on it. So I found this piece of packaging, this is from something, and I really like this paper, so I'm going to use that. And I think I want to accentuate those ridges a little bit, so just add a bit of something. That's looking quite nice. It's going to look good. And now what? I probably should make it fit all the way inside, but I'm not going to. Just applied a little bit of glue. Well, I bathed it in glue, really. Glue that's suitable for metal. And now I'm gonna glue this on. 
and hope for the best. It only has to look good at, from the front, so that's looking pretty good. I will accept. And now to attach it to the book cover, I can glue it directly on, which I will do, but I will also use brads. So I just need to determine where I want my book plate. It's a little bit hard because I will have binding when we do the Coptic stitch binding. I'll have thread here and then this, it's looking center now, but when the threads are there, you know, this kind of thing, it's gonna make it look. Anyway, I'm not gonna overthink it. I'm just going to go with this placement. All right, put something soft underneath, hold it in place and poke the holes. Perfect. Okay, now I do want to apply glue on the back of this. And now realign with the holes and put the brads through. I don't even know if they're long enough, barely long enough, but they'll do the job. And turn it around and close those brad prongs. Excellent. That's there. So that's going to hold the book plate in place. I hope that it's straight. It's kind of, I'm not sure because the wiggly lines are, I don't know. Just being a perfectionist now, just checking. That looks straight. It looks, yeah. Okay, so that's done. Now we can finally cover this here and this. But actually, I just had a thought. I wonder if I can use this on the cover. What do we think? I wish it didn't go from edge to edge. I don't like that. I wish it was shorter. Anyway, I'm not gonna do it. Now I, need to, now I feel like I need something in there. What do we think about something like this? Let it go. Now I can't stop singing the song. Be amazed. They're all a little bit lame, like nothing's really speaking to me right now. Use your wings. Be authentic. What do we think? Yeah. What about be fearless? What about this? What do we think about be fearless? What about this? Let's see how it would look. What do we think? I don't mind it. I think I'm gonna keep it. Maybe we'll get it real dark. It's not jumping out at you. I like it. All right, I'm gonna glue that on. And there we go. What do we think? All right, anyway, it's done now. So now we can cover the back. I have a little piece of this scrapbook paper and I think it goes really nice with the banjo. I have a piece of this scrapbook paper. It's my last little bit that I have. And I think it goes really nice with this aesthetic. So I am going to cut it down just slightly smaller than my cover. Ink the edges, apply glue all over, right up to the edges. And that's the glue applied. And now make sure it's the right way up and glue it down. And done. Repeat. And there we go. Done. So this is going to be the cover for my journal. Next thing we're going to do is prepare the pages for the inside. I just wanted to mention that I forgot to say, if you want to, you can seal this because acrylic paint can leave kind of a um, tacky, doesn't feel tacky. It doesn't feel sticky, but if you leave it against something, it might get stuck to it. So if you have some type of a seal, maybe something like this, or perhaps something, I mean, what are the chances you're gonna have this exact one? But you might, some type of a sealer to seal that paint, um, perfect. If you don't have anything like that, it's fine. I mean, I've done projects like this before and I never used any seal and, you know, years ago, and they're still, they're not getting stuck onto anything. So it's all good if you don't have a sealer. All right, like I said, the next thing we need to do is prepare the pages for the journal. So what I did is I prepared myself a template and basically it's just a cardstock template. And basically you want your pages to be almost the same, but slightly, slightly smaller than your cover. 
All right, so I got my pages out and I'm using just standard A4 or copy printer paper size that's been tea dyed as you can see. And I'm using my template just on the first one to mark where I want to cut and how large I want my pages to be. So I make a little marking and then cut that off and then I use that as a template for the rest of the pages. Once everything's been cut down, I fold them all in half and pop them down into signatures. And then I also have all of these offcuts, which I'm going to use to make something. It can be a little notepad or something like that. All right, so I have five signatures and each signature has five folded pages. One, two, three, four, five. You don't want too many pages in your signature because it's going to be more difficult during the binding process. The sweet spot of signatures in your book is three to five. But having said that, you can have as many signatures really as you want. I'm opting for five signatures. Five signatures with five pages each. So once the book is bound, actually I'm just going to show you one signature against the cover. So I don't know how well you can see, I have a tiny little bit of a margin up the top tiny little bit down the bottom and I actually don't mind the pages being slightly larger here on the side the opening side so putting everything together this is how my book is going to look once it's bound so that's perfect everything is just fitting in quite nicely so next week I'm going to do the actual tutorial on the Coptic stitch binding. I'm going to have notes written down as well so that you can watch me do it and also you will have notes that you can follow. I'm planning to do a little one like this with just three signatures just to get you going and then I'm going to bind this beautiful book using the Coptic stitch binding and hopefully if you've done this by next week you will have a book ready to go. So I will see you next week in the Coptic Stitch Binding video. But in the meantime, I really hope that you have a play with your hot glue gun and the paints and you create something beautiful. And perhaps you can share it with me in my Facebook page group or on Instagram. My links are all in the description box down below. I just also wanted to show you this one. I made this one probably about two years ago. And what I did here, this is just a cereal box. I followed the exact same procedure that I showed you, but I only did the hot glue technique on the front cover. The spine and the back, I only applied tissue. So you can also, I mean, look at that beauty. That's absolutely stunning. And so is this. I just love how that looks. And the more you kind of play around, the more you'll know what you prefer and I think of course this one must be my favorite out of these that I've done. Okay so this concludes today's video. I really hope that you feel inspired. Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week in the Coptic Stitch Binding video tutorial. I'll see you then. Bye!